I also love Southern Gothic literature, so I just think it's really pretty mm. to sing about slightly grotesque things. <laughs> like, I like the poetry. On this project, we've got If I Die Young Part 2, Cry at Your Funeral, Ghost. Death seems like there's a theme. A theme. It's been so good to me over the years. <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome to Country Heat Weekly, the destination for country music fans all around the world. We're so happy to have you. I'm Kelly Sutton. And I'm Amber Anderson, and we broadcast from this cute little historic house here on Music Row in Nashville, right in the middle of all of the country music action. And once a week, we get together to spill all the sweet tea. That's exactly right. <laughs> together. And we have an in-depth interview that goes along with all that sweet tea with a big country star. This week, we've got Kimberly Perry. You may know her as the former lead singer of the sibling trio, the band Perry. They gave us hits like If I Die Young, Chainsaw, Better Dig 2. I am a big TBP fan from back in the day. <laughs> And you'll hear Kimberly refer to them as TBP, the Van Perry. I was so excited to chat with her about this new chapter in her career. I'm glad you said that because when she said it the first time, I was like, what is she talking about? <laughs> TBP, the Van Perry. That's right. She just released a solo EP called Bloom, which we're going to talk to her all about. But she's also growing a real live human as we check in on her impending motherhood. She's going to have a baby. That's right. Plus... We get to hear how Kelly's favorite car (laughs) played into Kimberly's decision to get married. And we get an update on what her brothers have been up to. So stick around for all of that. It's all coming up on the way after we catch up with a little country music news. Okay, I have been so excited to talk about country music news with you, Kelly, because I found the perfect sports story with a country twist. Great. I know how much you love talking about sports. (laughs) I don't dislike it, but it's not like my number one thing. She loves talking about sports, guys. (laughs) But this is exciting. So there's a new committee that's been assembled to help book events for the enclosed stadium complex that's being built here in Nashville where our Tennessee Titans play. They haven't even broken ground yet on this, right? No. But they're worried about what they're booking for the building that hasn't been built yet. Okay. Yes, because the kind of events that this committee is working on require a lot of lead time. So you're thinking the Super Bowl, the NCAA Men's Final Four, probably the College Football National Championship, events that will probably take place in the next eight to ten years. This is great information, but why are we talking about it on Country (laughs) Weekly? (laughs) Good question. That's because Eric Church... Is one of the community leaders. Okay. That is right. on the booking committee, which I think is super cool. That is cool. I mean, the list is pretty outstanding. We're talking team owners, a former governor, former Titans player Eddie George is on the committee, a bunch of banking CEOs, and then there's Eric Church. I just picture him walking in in his leather jacket and his sunglasses. He's the only one in there dressed like that, right? <laughs> Probably. But if you think about it, this is really smart because if we do get the Super Bowl— He'll have first dibs at being the Super Bowl halftime show. You're not wrong. (laughs) I mean, it's a really, really good call for his career. Yeah. Plus, he's recently become a part owner of the Charlotte Hornets NBA team. So there's definitely clearly underlying sports interest there. That's very true. Okay, well, we have some news on another North Carolina boy on the show today. Let's talk about Luke Combs. Just topped the country airplay chart with a song that he didn't even plan on releasing as a single to country radio. We're talking about his cover of Tracy Chapman's 1988 hit, Fast Car. Such a good song. I have always been obsessed with that song. And his version is so good. But, you know, I think this is going to be a case study for music business students at Belmont because our team did some digging and came up with this timeline. So let's talk about it. Okay. March 24th, he released his album, Getting Old. That's right. He came in. He did the podcast with us at the time. His song, Going, Going, Gone, had just become his 15th consecutive number one song. Then in early April, he let his fans decide on his next single. He gave them two choices. It was either between Love You Anyway or Five Leaf Clover. And then in mid-April, he announced that Love You Anyway was the winner and that that would be released as his 16th single. Honestly, on my syndicated radio show, I played both of them because I (laughs) loved them both. But lo and behold, streaming numbers just couldn't be denied. The song that everyone, including country radio, fell in love with and wanted was Fast Car. 
it was officially released on May 31st after a lot of stations were playing it anyway. And now it's made history. Tracy Chapman wrote the song all by herself. And she's the first black woman to have a number one country song as the sole writer, which is just awesome. She told Billboard that she never expected to find herself on the country charts, but she's honored to be there. And she's probably not mad about the half million dollars in royalties that (laughs) Billboard estimates the song has generated for her. It's also renewed an interest in her original version, which has seen a huge bump in streaming, too. And side note to our friends at ASCAP, can you please get Tracy here to Nashville for a really epic number one party? That would be amazing. I love it. Luke's cover is really true to the original. I mean, if you listen to it, it's incredible. Now, he doesn't even change the gender of the song when he sings it. He keeps it really true to the original. He told journalist Grady Smith that it's one of the first songs he ever remembers hearing. I remember just him playing it in the truck. He had the cassette tape of it. And it was like I knew it was a hit song before I even knew what a hit song was or even cared what a hit song was. It was just like... I like all the songs on this album, but I like this one the most of all those songs. You know, the last time a cover song topped the country chart was in 2008 when Blake Shelton did it with Michael Bublé's Home. Oh, Oh, it's been a minute. It's been a minute. 2008. Okay. In other news, our London listeners won the country music lottery last weekend when Mary Morris debuted her new song called Get the Hell Out of Here. Yeah, clips have popped up all over social media, and it was just her singing accompanied by an acoustic guitar, and she told the crowd that she wrote it from her own experiences of wrestling with self-confidence and self-worth. I love that. And we know that she's been working with Taylor Swift's producer, Jack Antonoff, on new music. We've been waiting for that. We haven't had anything new from her since she released Humble Quest in March of 2022, so we're definitely ready. Well, she's been over in Europe touring with the chicks. Oh, that's right. Yeah. Ah, But you know what? This was not a part of that tour. Interestingly enough, she opened eight shows for the chicks, but they didn't have a London date. I'm not sure why. No, I don't know. That feels weird. They finished the trek of shows in Birmingham and Manchester. And Maren was like, well, since I'm in the neighborhood, and she (laughs) booked a headlining date in a theater there. I love that. I love that so much. Okay, we're going to pause here for a quick break. But when we come back, we'll roll right into our interview with a very pregnant Kimberly Perry. And after that, we've got some scoop to share on some cool country music programming coming to U.S. television later this month. Lots more of Country Heat Weekly when we come back. We are back. And Kimberly Perry has joined us in the studio. Uh, Welcome to to the Country Heat House. Oh my gosh, thank you for having me. Good to see see you. Love the swag. Talking about bloom. I was like, well, it comes in handy on like hair days that you don't want to put a couple of hours into hair. So I was just like, okay, we have dirty hair. We can add some extensions and a cap. Perfect. That's a Monday. That's a Monday. That's a Monday. (laughs) I wore my floral shirt. I love it. Bloom. For bloom. Yes. Yes. You know. All the blossoms. (laughs) So are you comfortable? How are you feeling? I feel really good. Okay. Physically, emotionally, spiritually, all the above. Um, <laughs> check, check, check. <laughs> I will say physically as I'm seven and a half months pregnant, and the most uncomfortable time of day is just night. I'm like, which side do I sleep on? There's a whole thing to go from the right side to the left side. That's the most awkward part of my life right now. Can so. you breathe? Are you having like the stopped up? <laughs> okay, because that was me. I couldn't breathe when I was pregnant at night. I would be like propped up with 17 pillows. It's happening now. I woke up in the middle of the night and my husband had put on the white noise machine extremely loud <laughs> and I was like did you do this because I'm snoring and yes. he was like yeah, yeah. No. <laughs> so apparently that's been a third trimester development it's I love thing. that he just like turned on the machine oh, yeah. and didn't say like hey you're snoring and like I'm growing like a human. here's a pillow I know I can do whatever I want well we've had many of those conversations I've always been like not that emotional of a roller coaster girl like hormonally I'm pretty even kill um and so the first two trimesters was like this is a breeze emotional pregnant ladies like what is that then third trimester came along. He Hello. has to be very careful with the way that he presents things to me right now. <laughs> oh, I do remember yeah. these days. <laughs> We're there. Is the nursery done? How are we feeling about all the prep? The nursery, well, the crib is done. So I know that's not exactly answering your question. Um, I have a rug that's in route. I would say in the next two weeks. Okay. We'll have everything wrapped. Yay. Just know none of that matters at the beginning. <laughs> like if you have a car seat I do have and that. diapers, you're good. 
<laughs> All the things. I want to talk about the name you chose for your son, Whitaker James. Oh, is that a family so name? Funny. It is such an amazing name. Thank you so much. So James is, my grandfather's name was L, the letter L, and James was his middle name. So I mean, he's like the most beloved character in my life. Um, so we wanted James in there. And then Whitaker, we just literally Googled <laughs> handsome Southern boy names. <laughs> 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 we were very specific, and Whitaker was on the list, and we we both agreed on it. So I was like, "That's I love it." Love it. And we'll call him Wit for short. Sure. Wit. Oh, well, we are so excited about all the new things that you're delivering, including the solo EP, Bloom. Thank you. We are just are so thrilled. But I want to rewind a little and fill in some gaps for the fans who have missed you, like me, um, and give a little backstory for fans who are new to country music in like the last seven to eight years. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. Let's back up. So I think the last music that you guys put out as a band was in 2018. That sounds about right. Okay. Yeah, I think we put out a song called Night Swim. So okay. it was like a single. So over these past few years or so, have you been writing music this whole time? Did you just say, I need a break, like a complete yeah. break? How did you handle that time of transition? So with the band Perry, we've constantly been writing and and recording music. I mean, even in our countryside, you know, we put out two full-length projects here. There were two projects that we recorded in Nashville past that that just never really saw the light of day. And I'm the kind of writer, too. If I write it now, I got to put it out, like, in the next six months, or I'll just move on. Um, so, yes, we had always been writing music, and it just felt like we had such two wonderful first projects in country. I got in this mentality with TVP of, like, how do you, like, put out a thing now and it has to be at least as strong as the last body of work, or are you undoing, like, the legacy of what we've built? And so I, I really got in my head a lot about that, and so there were a lot of hesitations to, to putting out brand new music. I bet. You know? Yeah. And so finally in COVID, so October of 2020, three of us went down to Dallas and made this really fun record. It was country music. It was almost like nighttime club country music. And I loved it. Um, but it also was like, if we are putting out our third project, it's got to be like TBP's return to country third project. And it just felt like so much pressure. And those recording sessions were really more about us falling in love with country music again and making music together. Um, and so it, it's a beautiful project for that reason, but just did not feel like the right one to enter the space. Re-enter the space. Yeah. Hmm. When did you decide, okay, let's pause the band Perry and let's do some solo things? When did that officially happen? Officially, officially. It would have been last February. Um, but the time between those COVID sessions in late October 2020 till February 2022, there was a lot of existential conversations between the three of us. Um, a lot of those about life. I mean, life and creative so intersect in the way that I write songs. So it was sort of like, how do I keep living my life and grow these pieces that are equal dreams of mine? Like, I did not have a partner at that point. Um no baby on the horizon in that moment. And for me, I was like, I have to let these things in my life blossom so I can continue to create and have things to inspire me to write about. Same thing for them. Like we're three siblings that grew up under the same roof, but our tastes lie in very different places too. And we all have different goals. And it was just time finally to explore that. Um, we hadn't since I was 15, Reed was 10 and Neil was eight. Like we've been on a tour about something. Then. <laughs> so you know, it was just time, you know, yeah. to we had this collective and we're so proud of it. Um, and it gave us a lot of life. But I'm like, we're individuals, too. Yeah. And that needs to be something that we champion and let stand on its own stage for a minute. You're also family at right. the end of the day. Yeah. So it's not like you're just like business partners and you're like, I got to do what's best for me. Like right. these are your brothers. So and you guys all have each other's best interest in mind. For sure. And I can only imagine that's. Yeah probably really tricky to yeah I mean it is <laughs> navigate. And the truth is like we agreed most of the time on creative things but as the oldest it was also sort of I feel like my role to go like hey but are you getting everything that's left on the the table of life for yourself yeah. and um you know 
the answer was no, not yet. And so really since those COVID years, we just started figuring that out for ourselves individually. And I knew I was making a solo record officially last February. Um, it was after a writing session with Nicole Gallion and Jimmy Robbins. Mm-hmm. We wrote a song that's on Bloom called Ghosts. And it was just like, whoa, I'm not thinking of any masculine perspective. I'm, this is solely a feminine and a very um, like self-statement that I'm making. And I was like, oh. I think I'm probably making a solo project, you know? (laughs) Um, (laughs) That easy. Yeah, so that was, it was definitely a long coming epiphany, but that in a moment, a piece of music defined that that's what I'm doing, you know? I love that so much. That's the power of a song. So speaking of epiphanies, when did you have the epiphany that you were going to move to Nashville? Finally, because you oh, had I never was, lived here. When I was like eight years old. Officially. <laughs> the collective wanted to settle in East Tennessee, the, the Perry Collective. And we always grew up like driving through the mountains as kids. Mm-hmm. Fell in love with that. Um, my personal dream was always to move to Nashville. Like when it came time to make a college decision, I just had like Belmont pamphlets. So like all of, I was like, mom and dad, I'm making a statement. You know, like, <laughs> yeah, this yeah, is where yeah. I want to be. And for whatever reason, East Tennessee is where we settled. Um and worked out of that or a tour bus. So when I got married um, to Johnny, I met him at those Dallas sessions in 2020. Um, we dated for eight months and then eloped to Vegas for a midnight ceremony eight months later. Um, <laughs> Tell me it was Elvis that married really, you. No, it wasn't. Dang. <laughs> we did our vow renewal with Elvis. Oh, okay. God. But we were barefoot in a neon skirt and him in a white T-shirt at the Wynn in a hotel room. It was so dreamy. We, like, did this whole—I had this whole litmus test for how to know it was the right night to do it. And we were in L.A. for some meetings, and I was like, if we find somebody who will let us lease a black Corvette and drive it to Vegas, because, you know, you, like, lease fancy cars in L.A., they're like, have fun driving around town, you know? Yeah, And they let us do it. And I was like, if we can logistically figure that out, we're getting married tonight, you know? Oh, and dude. So, yeah. and so they let us do it, and um, it Black just all Corvette. the pieces fell in place. That's Kelly's I dream. Love, I, love it? Corvette. I love Corvette. I love. Listen, it's my spirit animal now. So every time we see one on the interstate, I'm like, pay attention. How did you meet your husband? <laughs> you you threw that well, out there in the Dallas sessions, and I'm like, wait, what? what, what, what? Apparently, up? we met the night before. I really knew that I was meeting him, but I had had some martinis that night. Okay, great. <laughs> um, <laughs> he met me on a Friday night. I met him on Saturday. <laughs> <laughs> I love this so much. <laughs> <laughs> on Saturday afternoon um, because everybody went to a hangover brunch, and he was there. It, it was such a crazy crew of people that we were working with. They're just these phenomenal creatives, um, but everybody has a huge personality, and I'm pretty shy, truth be known. Like, if there's a lot of people, I'll just be like the wallflower, and uh, Johnny was just at this table, and I was just drawn to his lack of chaos. I was like, he just feels like a safe person for me to sit by and talk to and he's 6'5 bleach blonde like I immediately fell in love with him <laughs> at the table <laughs> you know mm-hmm. and um and so we basically hung out every day he lived in Austin um he blew off a lot of work to be able to stay with me up in Dallas and we hung out just constantly that was in October and then he moved to Tennessee in January is he wow. a writer, producer? Does, was he there in a creative capacity? He was there as a friend of our producers, okay. um, but he did exist in those music circles. He was in a, like, how do I describe it? Like a Western punk rock band in Austin called the Crystal Rippers. Okay. Um, yep. He wore a lot of overalls without a shirt underneath. <laughs> like, Love it. That happened. Um, check it out on online. The videos do exist. Uh, <laughs> But he was also during COVID years because, like, all the shows yeah. just went away. He was doing landscape design for a lot of, like, hotels and restaurants and stuff. So cool. he's a creative in all the ways. Yeah. But his plant whispering is, like, very attractive. It's <laughs> magical and very attractive. So I'm like, you just do all the stuff outside. I'll do everything inside. You handle outside. He's really, really good at it. Oh, that's I, like I want him, him to start a page called Johnny Plants Tennessee, you know? Oh, and that'd be so sick. And yes. I was like, well, you got a brand and everything. You can do that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so talk to us about recording the EP Bloom. Did it feel like it was freedom to you? Did you feel pressure when you were doing this because it was a solo thing and it was your first one? Like, I think that we really, because I had such a great circle of creatives, both in songwriting, then Jimmy Robbins produced, it was like 
we never went into the sessions going like, are we writing hits? Are we writing big choruses? You know, it was just more like, how do we bring my voice back into the space that it feels like it belongs? Like it's a homecoming. How do we just perfectly sit that in the room in the house? That's my room in the country music house, you know? So if we had just gone, well, we need to write a hit. It's going to be down the middle. That would have scared me more than the highly narrative project that I feel like I ended up writing. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. it does. Yes. It does. And I love that you said that your voice, it was like a homecoming. I was a huge Ben Perry fan. I've always loved your voice. You are that you just hit the nail on the head. Like I just feel like Nashville has missed your voice. And I love that you said that. So you've talked a lot about If I Die Young Part 2, which, gosh, I love that song. We saw you at ACMs. You gave us some insight into that song then, but I want to dig into some of the Do other it, songs sure. on the EP. Better dig, too. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Better dig. <laughs> there she goes. Every that one. was good. My dad joke for the day. <laughs> there it is. Let's actually start there, because on this project, we've got If I Die Young Part 2, Cry at Your Funeral, Ghost. Death seems like there's a theme. A theme. It's been so good to me over the years. <laughs> you know, we see a theme. <laughs> I think the metaphor is less literal death and more like the death and life of relationships. Yep. Life and death of like seasons changing. Definitely like the consideration. I, I heard this quote when I was little and it just stuck with me. It was like, Always make your most important decisions sitting in a graveyard and then ask yourself, will this matter when I'm here? And that just like as a kid, like I heard it maybe when I was 12, 13, probably entirely too young to hear something like that. Mm -hmm. But I was just like, oh, like when you pair what's happening now against the fact that life really is so short. Yeah. Let's put it all in perspective. I also love Southern Gothic literature. So I just think it's really pretty to sing about slightly grotesque things. <laughs> like, I like the poetry, you yeah. know? So it's like the combo of, I think, all of those things. Yeah. So you wrote all five songs on the EP. Which one was oldest? Which one was newest? What's the time span in between? Ghosts was the, um, the oldest. So okay. it was February of 2022. And If I Die Young Part 2 was the latest, written in... Late August 2022. Okay. Yeah. And we're, I'm literally headed back into the studio this week um, to record some more that I've been writing in real time, which has been the luxury of this project. I'm kind of calling it like the Bloom era, the mm -hmm. Bloom project, because everything is, I'm living it in real time and immediately writing about it and then getting to put it out just a handful of months later. Mm -hmm. yeah. I've never had that luxury mm -hmm. before. Love that. You know, like I get over things very quickly, yeah. even creative things, because there's always another great song to be written. Yeah. Um, and so maybe that's a little bit of my Achilles is I'll fall for the song that's the most recent. But I do think there's like a life wave that you're just trying to ride. And that's why God bless 2023 and forward because with streaming, I mean, we can, you just yeah, put it you out. can. Yeah. Put it yes. Out. Yeah. And there's always the next song. Yep. You know? Yep. Burn the House Down is about a relationship, but there seems to also be a lot of parallels to your career in that song. Oh, Yeah. How do you? Oh, yeah. All the above. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, funny how anybody can make it, whatever they need it to be for them. Um, but for me, I mean, there were definitely this, these seasons, both professionally, um, but also as a woman. I, I went through a divorce in 20, huh, it lasted a while, um, like 2018, 2019. And there were these moments I was like, okay, hold on. It feels like career is somewhat in ashes. It's how I felt in the moment. Um, this relationship, so just my life as a woman, feels like it's in ashes. Now I'm literally rebuilding from the ground up again. And that sometimes feels really daunting unless you had been building on shaky soil. And then it's like, it's a good thing that things get sort of leveled and you can rebuild in a more firm spot in your life. Um, so that really had been my story of like, let everything sort of burn to the ground and then figure out how to rise through those ashes. So the ultimate bloom and blossom is sort of the beauty from Ash's story, but it's a violent process for a flower to grow. You got to like break out of the seed. You got to find your way out of the soil. You got to stand on your own two feet and grow. Um, and burn the house down was sort of the ground level of that process. The way that you're speaking of all of these things happening now is a very, like, hindsight matter of fact, but I can't imagine what that felt like to go through it. 
I am a big therapy believer. Um, I had a lot of good people around me in those seasons. But I also took some good solo time. Like, there were these moments I would just be like praying. I'd be like, God, like, I don't even think I know who you built me to be. Like, I don't even know that I know my preferences anymore. Because both in career and just the series of relationships that I had been in um, kind of robbed. I allowed them to rob me of identity, you know? Like, I'm a people pleaser by nature. Like, that's the human experience to stop sort of being blown and tossed by every opinion and really go, wait, who am I? What do I prefer? Do I like Mexican food or do I want a hot dog? Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, which is it? Right. And truly not just going like, yeah, whatever you want. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. so subtle how quickly we give pieces of ourselves away. And I had just really lost sense of all of that for myself. So the last handful of years was writing the entire time, but really figuring out how to stand on my two feet and know what those feet even looked like. Mm -hmm. Size seven and a half. <laughs> now you know. Now I know. Eight right now that I'm pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so speaking of which, baby is coming in August. Yes. If not before. And we hear that you're trying to hit the road at the end of the year. Yes. Too? So I talked to a couple of my artist friends. Okay. Mickey Guyton was like Love two months. That's all you need. Um, Hillary Scott from Lady A was like three months. Give yourself three months. So we're going to see what happens. It okay. depends on, obviously, we're banking on everything being healthy and seamless. So November and December, we'll get started doing some radio shows and those things. And then 2024, I've been like, guys, I want a bus baby. Yes. Um, we're going to figure <laughs> it out. And so we're going to hit the road. Because that's my true love. Like, I love, love, love to play live music. I want him to be a weird little music spirit anyway. So I'm like, great. The earlier exposure the better the better know? and can't wait hubby will be able to go too he will yay yep yeah we'll great. travel as a family so <gasps> so good i know i'm excited i just like i love tour bus life we really even with my brothers we would do like 150 dates a year but we hadn't since covid so like it's been a minute i was gonna say you, know? you guys used to tour a lot so hard and a i lot. love it it's yes. to me it's all about like how to just convert hearts of audience you know it's like how are we winning them over tonight it is my favorite sport because it's like you've got your fans there but then you've got some who are sitting back to listen like do i like this will i like this by the end of the night and i love to like pick out the the guy or gal who's like really skeptical and go like i'm gonna win your heart tonight to you and me tonight you know oh! it's so much fun you know what's crazy I had already been a fan of your music but I got to see you live and I'm gonna completely butcher this because this is like literally off the top of my head maybe Tim McGraw tour yeah for sure in Orlando okay. was that like 2000 and that was our first like first tour I mean it had to be like 09 2010 for sure and I remember leaving being like they were my favorite of the night. Because <laughs> Luke, Luke was in the middle Luke, spot. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. My friend was working on that tour. I lived in Orlando at the time. I love that. We all went. And I remember telling everybody, like, y'all have got to listen to Van Perry. You have to listen to them. And, I mean, so, I mean, you didn't have to win me over that night, but we'll just say that I you guys it. did. It's such a, <laughs> it's so fun. And that's the, the element with Bloom, too. I got to play a handful of sets at CMA Fest. Yeah. So, I, like, really, I was like, okay, baby boy, let's get here. How healthy and mama got to get on the road you know yeah. I just I love it I can't wait to bring it to life was life. there any nerves going back out there and doing mm. it solo I think the biggest nerves were actually like the rehearsals mainly because I'm communicating with band that I've never communicated with but they were so pro it was amazing we did like one day of rehearsal the band killed it and I was like okay God, I feel good. Good. okay so we wrap up Every interview with a round of burning questions. These are just oh, fast, okay. off the top of your head. We'll I throw always something rationalize out. my answers okay. on like the fast. I'm going to try to be really disciplined just, and just answer your just, question. Let's okay. go. Okay, here we go. Ready? Favorite flower? Dahlia. Do you have a garden, either flowers or vegetables? I have an herb garden. If you're burning a candle, what's the scent? Crushed mint. Do you and Johnny have a love song? Oh, see, why is this one taking me the longest? We do. Honestly, maybe this is dark, but I love it. It's Forever Young by Alphaville. I don't know why. I think it's just like the melody is so romantic. This is me rationalizing. Okay, guys. <laughs> I'm not going to explain it. <laughs> okay, other than your song, Smoke Em Too, can you name another country song with the word marijuana in the lyrics? 
Um, I sh- I mean, sure, Willie songs, right? Have to have that. But why is nothing coming directly to my head? Can you? Do you know one? The only thing I can think of is the Casey Musgraves. Casey, Casey. What oh, was it? Um, a marijuana, Merry Christmas Mary or something. Jane. Yeah, something. that counts. Merry yeah. go round. Yeah, that there counts. you go. Yeah. You got there. Close enough. That counts. If you're showing up at the wedding to dance, what song is guaranteed to get you on the dance floor? Uh, Happy by Pharrell. So I good. I love that one. Mm-hmm. Okay, final question. What was the last thing you bought on Amazon? <laughs> Too much. Um, it was probably burp, burp cloths. <laughs> <laughs> That's necessary. Sorry. We have a lot of those now. Yeah. Yep. That's Can never have too many of those. <laughs> That's exactly right. And actually, I have one more question because I know we'll hear about it if we don't ask about your brothers. Yes. We know they're both engaged. Are they working on any music? They are. Yes. I will say I have no idea what it is yet because we are trying to focus on being family. Um, but I've heard the room from both of their mouths that they're working on music. Okay. Separately yeah. or together? Separate. Oh. Individually. Oh. This is like the individual era for the Van Perry. Okay. Yeah. We are loving it. Love it so good. much. The EP is called Bloom. We love watching you grow. We love all the things that are happening for you. Congratulations. Thank Congrats, you. Congrats, Kimberly. Thank Thanks for, for being me. here. We are very much on Baby Watch for Kimberly and her husband, Johnny. As we sit down and tape this, Baby Whitaker has not yet arrived. By the way, I checked, and Johnny's old band, Crystal Rippers, does have a song available on Amazon Music. It's not necessarily my thing, but hey, to each their own. So if you want to listen to it, you can go do that whenever you like. Now, next week, we're going to have Jake Owen in here. He's going to be chatting with us. I haven't talked to him in forever, but also, I feel like with the two Floridians in here, I might not be able to get a word in edgewise. <laughs> Probably not, but he is a Seminole, so that could be problematic. Oh, not good. Not good to a Gators fan. Okay. No, not good. But we'll talk about the home state. We've got plenty to talk about. He's got a brand new album. Yes. Loose Cannon. We'll talk to him all about that. He's in his turquoise era, it seems. Yes, he has on a beautiful turquoise suit. It's a good look on him. Uh Plus, we're going to dig into what you can expect in two upcoming ABC specials. Does that mean we get a country music doubleheader? No, a doubleheader is two in the same day. So what we're getting oh, okay. is to CMA Fest TV specials in back-to-back days. A good try. I tried. I struck out. Ah! I'm, I'm giving you credit. Go, Good job. Good job. Go team. Okay. So the full-length documentary celebrating the 50th anniversary of CMA Fest is going to air on July 18th on ABC. It's already streaming on Hulu, but this is going to open it up to an even wider audience. And then the CMA Fest special highlighting all the performances from the 2023 festival will air the next night, July 19th. That's the one hosted by Dirk Bentley, L. King, and Lainey Wilson. Do you think we'll make the TV special? I mean, we were all over CMA Fest hosting things. I mean, I say unlikely. However, me, Breland, and Lily Rose made it into last year's. It was like a five-second B-roll of us taking a selfie backstage. It counts. <laughs> so that counts. Mm-hmm. That totally counts. But I would say it's highly unlikely this mm-hmm. year. But our live podcast episodes with Brothers Osborne, Tanya Tucker, and Jelly Roll have all gone live. So you can binge those mm-hmm. until we're back with Jake Owen next week. And if you have any questions for Jake, send them to us on Instagram. You can find me, the Kelly Sutton. And I'm Hey, it's Amber A. Mm-hmm.